A pequena área quase foi gol com... Jesus Christ, are you okay, bro? Yeah, look, look, I'm sorry. Laps of concentration, it won't happen again. Pra sobra, vai entrando, gol contra! Oh, that's crazy how that's gone into the back of the net off me over there. Was hey, yo, what, what's that in your hand? What, this? Oh, no, nah, there's nothing going on. Is that a betting slip? <laughs> uh, obviously. Yo guys, it is your boy Niren here, and you are watching FTW. This, of course, is the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. But what's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, the UK government are under fire once again for... Let me just check my notes real quick. Ah... Uh... Forgive me. What they're under fire for every week. After it emerged, they'd held a huge party at number 10 Downing Street for Christmas last year. After telling us that we weren't allowed to see our loved ones for the festive season. So then I said, I might listen to him if he was in a higher tax bracket. Oh, listen here, my good fellow, I've got a joke for you. Oh, go ahead, what is it? Us caring about the poor. No, <laughs> no, no, yes, no. Absolutely. But it's okay, because whilst families were separated from their loved ones for Christmas, apparently these officials broke no rules whatsoever. So we're all fine. And Arsenal will feel that it's one rule for them and another for everybody else as well. After yet more VAR controversy in their 2-1 defeat to Everton. Gunners fans might feel hard done by after Everton defender Ben Godfrey wasn't given a red card for a potential stamp on Tomiyasu. I don't think it was on purpose, but I still think it was dangerous enough for him to be sent off here. I don't know why everybody turns into WWE protagonists when they face these lot. Who's even in the VAR room for this? No, man, what the fuck, man? Wake up, bro. There's things going on. I'm crying out loud, this thing's broken again. Why are you watching it on Zoom? You have an official feed. I don't watch it a minute. I've got it on this screen over here. You're not even watching the right game. That's not even the Premier League. What are you? I say Arsenal will feel hard done by, but Everton and Richarlison had two goals ruled out for offside during this one. And for the second decision, whoever drew this one was not using technology. Richarlison, more like Richarlison off. Am I right? Because he's offside, obviously. My humor's in the gutter. I think that's it for my channel now. Where did it all go wrong? Hey there, guys. This is Niren here. He might have been disallowed, but Ben White was still confused. He doesn't watch football, so he just sees the ball hit the back of the net. He thought it was 4-1 at the end. The Brazilian striker, however, wasn't letting the linesman take away his hat-trick match ball. And Everton's eventual winner came in the form of a Damari Gray 90-second minute wonder strike. After last week's result and mishaps after the United game, I'm fully expecting to to see Aubameyang like his Instagram post now. Aubameyang, for that matter, had a chance again to level the game. He's got more highlights in his own hair than this season. I'm not even sure he starts for Gabon at this point. And I don't even know another man from Gabon. Even in real life, Arsenal are back to their banter era ways. After a bright start as well. <laughs> Thomas Partey, Partey Is that a Champions League ball in this video? The nerve of these lot. They've had VAR on their side in this one and they've still lost to an out of form Everton as well. At least we know that the Arsenal version of all or nothing is going to be class. We're concerned about Albert at the moment. Like his confidence is at an all time low and he's taking everything to heart right now. So I got this new shampoo, right? Shampoo, you want to talk about hair products in front of me with my hairline? I wasn't, no, I wasn't saying anything about your hairline. Don't worry. So I see how it is. It's the body shape shaming for me. And Ketia missed a big chance in this one as well late on. He'll have to dish out an apology to Arsenal fans afterwards. I hey, never come back in that top, you know. To be honest, I think he just saw that Arsenal were offering him a new contract and he said, let me sabotage myself a little bit because I don't want to stay around here. And this result once again leads to questions about Mikel Arteta. For a man who's meant to be the son of Pep Guardiola, he's looking like an illegitimate child right now. Not on to the Champions League. And those who are expecting coverage of Wednesday's games, unfortunately I can't bring those two you. As you're watching this, I'm currently on a flight, which means I wasn't able to record and edit when I would usually want to, so Wednesday's games just aren't included. But on a Tuesday, we saw a battle for qualification out of Group B between Porto and Atleti, and that was, well, it was a bare knuckle fist fight. Run it, Bickering! Please, sir, can you calm down? Okay, we're trying to play the game here. Over at Liverpool, and they made it 18 points for a possible 18 with victory over AC Milan, and Nat Phillips turned into prime Maldini at the San Siro. Manchester City lost their final group stage match to RB Leipzig 2-1. Pep was devising a plan with his side 1-0 down, but whatever the plan was, it probably needs a rethink, judging by the next tweet. And Kyle Walker was sent off for a simply brainless challenge with 10 minutes to go. We've got a reconstruction of the challenge here. 
I don't know whether he had to be somewhere. Maybe there was another one of them orgies going on at his living room. I don't know. Meanwhile, in PSG's convincing victory over Club Bruges, that man again, Lionel Messi, matched the great Pele's goal-scoring record in official matches, taking his tally to 758. Pele's already got his four-year-old grandson out in the back garden so that he can now inflate his. Back in the Premier League, and West Ham beat London rivals Chelsea 3-2 with a late art to Mazuaku goal to rise into the Champions League spot to Again, they've beaten Liverpool, Man City and Chelsea in the last three months alone. They might well be the best team in the world with Craig Dawson at centre-back. It was a poor day at the office for Edouard Mendy. His mistake gave away a penalty in the first half. Rhys James attempted to put off Manuel Lanzini, who wasn't having any of it when he stuck the ball in the back of the net. Then when Mazuaku's strike came towards him for the winner, he looked like a random donning goal on pro clubs. Aaron Ramsdale's getting slandered at the moment because he's too theatrical. He makes camera saves, so I guess Mendy is just camera. Mazuaku confirmed he was just as confused with the cross going in on Twitter, but very suspicious behaviour from Chelsea's goalkeeper here, and I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling. Liverpool struck late on two to snatch three points versus Wolves with a 94th minute winner from Divock Origi. You guys are in a crisis. I'm on my way. What is it with this guy? We actually need a statue of him. He's the most unnecessarily clutch player ever. I'm convinced he just comes out of hibernation to score as the most important goal of the season when he gets bored. Anytime Jurgen turns to on the bench, you just know we're covered. <laughs> no problem, mate, yeah? No fucking problem. Makes you question what else he would leave to the last seconds. I have eyes on the bomb. Over. Yep, I can see. I can see. Okay, all you're going to need to do is snip the red wire with the scissors that I gave to you. All right, I'm on the case. Divoka, just to clarify, you, you did get my message. There's still 37 minutes left on the timer, boys. We're not going anywhere until I leave this to the most Divock, dramatic please. Point. Diogo Jota provided us with miss of the century in the first half. He might be playing a little bit too much FIFA at the moment. One Liverpool fan managed to steal a seat from the Molyneux upon leaving the game. I mean, how's he sneaking that out then? I'm just glad that we won, though. Especially against the side with a Dharma Triore in it. Draw for the tool. Go on and go on and think I'm a fool. Go on and go on and draw for the match. Go on and go Man United won in the league as well thanks to a beautiful goal from Fred, who now has more goals and assists this season than Harry Kane. With me, I think I, I can help you to, to explode. Someone's finally found this guy's Brazilian passport behind the sofa. And one fan managed to film Bruno Fernandes whilst he was sat in traffic in his car. And Bruno asked him who his captain was on fantasy football. I think he was hoping for a different answer than what he got. I'm Salah all the way. I'm sorry, man. He takes up all my money. Oh, no. Bruno. You saw him yesterday, you saw him yesterday! <laughs> Man City took top spot in the league thanks to a 3-1 win over Watford. Claudio Ranieri will just be happy that it wasn't more. Listen lads, at least it's not eight. Bernardo Silva is in stupid, stupid form and he's probably performing as one of the top three players in the whole league right now. Danny Rose in particular seemed terrified facing up against him. Why are you running? Why are you- Leeds United grabbed a last minute equaliser in their game against Brentford. Goalkeeper Ilian Melier couldn't contain his happiness and seemingly neither could this steward. Over in Germany and Bayern Munich came out on top over Borussia Dortmund in Der Klassica. The final score being 3-2 in their Bundesliga clash. There was controversy though here and it revolved around refereeing decisions. Erling Haaland saw it coming with this tweet as soon as the referee was announced. And after being rumoured to be on Monday Night Football with Sky Sports, he must have had a very stressful journey back from Germany to London sitting on the Jubilee line and Jude Bellingham wasn't too pleased at full time either. You can look at a lot of the decisions in the game you know you give a, a referee that's you know match fixed before the biggest game in Germany what do you expect? Now the backstory to this is the referee in question was found guilty of match fixing and accepting bribes all the way back in 2006. And I think it was basically covered up until 2014, at which point he was given a six month ban. I don't know about the cover up exactly, but I know he was only given a half a year ban, which is absolutely ludicrous for a top flight referee. I don't care what anyone says. In the same way that you get struck off for certain things in medicinal jobs, the worst thing you can do as a referee is accept 
accept a bribe in a game. Jude was probably wrong to insinuate that he match fixed here, if that's what he was getting at. But he's right. The guy should not be refereeing at the top level, regardless of whether it was one mistake or not. All I know is get Jude to England so that you can call out our referees. That's, I mean, that we wouldn't help. The same would just happen here as well. Turns out Bayern midfielder Corentin Tolisso also felt bad for Dortmund, missing this open goal whilst the keeper was forward right at the end of the game. Staying in Germany and we've got some unbelievable support for lower league side Rot Weiss Erfurt down in the fifth tier. In Spain and former Liverpool forward Yago Aspas now playing for Celta Vigo provided some of the highest IQ football we've ever seen. After scoring against Valencia and getting himself injured in the process, Yago realised that he was not going to be able to continue for the rest of the game or potentially even play in their next fixture. So he took off his shirt to get an intentional yellow card knowing he was one yellow from a suspension and that he could just serve that at the same time as being injured. Can't take a corner to save his life, but at least there's that. For Inter and Arturo Vidal is out here just trying to distract every official possible. And Hellas Verona, after being 3-0 down versus Venezia, came back to win 4-3 in the second half. Absolute foolishness from Venezia, moving like prime AC Milan. The one from Istanbul, though. Over in the Russian Premier League and Zenit St. Petersburg came out of the tunnel in their most recent game, carrying dogs from a local shelter that are looking for a home, and it's, it's very wholesome. We've got the best goal of the week coming from Scotland here, purely for style points alone. And it's this finish from David Turnbull with a full spin in the middle. I mean, it's got a 360 degree twirl and everything. Wow! Recent COVID restrictions in the Netherlands now state that amateur sports teams aren't allowed to practice between 5 p.m. and 5 a.m. So to get around this, a side called Quick Boys started their training session at 5 a.m. And this is the reception they got from their fans. Hibs asked their fans who they were playing this week and their response to it was extremely predictable. Doesn't look as if they impressed Livingston, to be honest. Over in South America, an Atletico Mineiro won their first Brazilian league title in 50 years. And as a celebration of the momentous occasion, they offered out free tattoos at their stadium for their fans who wanted to get the badge, well, tattooed on them. And one board substitute waiting for full time decided he was going to get into the party mood early by singing into a nearby pitch microphone. <laughs> É, a campanha do, é, da Chape esse galo. ano foi especialmente desastrosa. Ai, né? credo! O Galão ganhou mais uma vez. Ai, credo! Olha só o que estava... O áudio que você ouviu foi isso aí. And finally, there is an outstanding story, an outstanding end to a season over in Paraguay, where the Premier League title went down to the final day, with first playing second on the final day. Now, Cerro Porteño were playing Guarini and were 2-0 down going into injury time. But crucially, having gone down to 10 men themselves, their opposition had picked up two red cards. With the man advantage going into the 98th minute, they scored twice in three minutes, and with the last kick of the game, won their Premier Division title. <laughs> Not only was it an incredible Aguero-esque moment, but the manager who'd gone through personal and family-related grief in the last few months had the chance to dedicate such a dramatic and late win to a late family member. Probably the best title fight you're going to hear about this whole year. Hello all and welcome to The Beautiful Game, the segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> And that concludes the beautiful game. Closer to home, and Chesterfield played Salford in the FA Cup this week. Their opposition are owned by Paul Scholes, who of course went viral a few months ago for chewing his own daughter's toenails. They celebrated one of their goals by recreating that. It's a sh housery award for the entire squad. Yaya Torre is apparently working at Tottenham Hotspur right now, helping out with their academy. Can you imagine his half-time team talks? Uh, because I feel the lads had to handle a game for a game. At Newcastle, and given their recent 
recent takeover, they have started taking down Sports Direct sponsorship on the stadium, and it's soon to be replaced by EFL signs. Meanwhile, there was crazy stuff last weekend where Port Vale had to ask their fans to help out with the removal of snow from the pitch in an attempt to give their next league game the go-ahead. In Ghana, and a mural of West Ham captain Mark Noble has been unveiled, and... <coughs> Yep, that is... that's Mark no. The Colombian second division may well have seen the clearest definition of match fixing in human history in a key game that decides who gets promoted to the top flight. I mean, why... you'd at least try and make it look realistic, not just stand there, lads. Match fix Over in the lower leagues of Croatia, and someone needs to give the ground staff a raise. In Denmark, at least their ground staff are able to get the snow off the pitch, though it's not stopping the players from ending up there. So basically what I'm trying to say, babe, is when we get this Gagan press system going that Ralph is trying to implement here is going to create turnovers high up the pitch, which is going to allow for overlaps and overrunning of their defense almost instantaneously. Malmo were crowned Swedish Premier League champions over AIK on goal difference this weekend, and it's fair to say the fans were pretty excited when the full time whistle was blown. <laughs> And why take out one player when you can obliterate a second up in Scotland? But now for the moment you've all been waiting for, because over in Romania, you could argue that some of the clips we've seen from the past are just downright illegal. Well, one third division player in the country has taken that completely literally. He's had enough of what he's seeing around him, okay? And has decided to quit life as a third division Romanian footballer in order to become a full-time policeman. From what we've seen, there's a lot of people that need arresting, so he needs to get to work quickly. Now over in El Salvador, and we have got an unbelievable bullet header here. Slight problem is that it's into the wrong net. However, over in the CONCACAF Cup in North America, and this Honduran side provided probably the worst miss we're gonna see all week, a random transfer rumor generator on Twitter managed to bait out the chairman and owner of Australian side Perth Glory, who was completely bemused when he saw that Daniel Sturridge had been linked with a move to QPR, down the Swiss second division, and keep an eye out for this league table all year, because this title fight involves everybody but the team at the bottom. The third division of Turkey is just outright chaotic, it would seem. Staggering! Just staggering! Meanwhile, goalkeepers in Indonesia clearly aren't having a lot to do, and they're having to keep themselves occupied in a slightly different manner. Nesta, for John Kong Saja, and Jaga Mr. Gawang, lakukan. But now it is time for Still Nil Nil, and you guys know the score by now. This, of course, is the segment of the show where I bring to you the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And look, Sunday League is not for the faint-hearted. It's for the big men. It's strong tackles, it's strong personalities, and so when a player feels like having a bit of a dive, it's not always going to go down well. Odds on this guy getting snapped within the next 37 seconds. On to the weird stuff though now. Up in Scotland and after a Dundee athletic football was launched so far, it ended up in the nearby River Tay. It was found two weeks later, 408 miles away on a beach in the Netherlands. Former Manchester United player Mame Biram Juve had an unusual task when playing in Turkey yesterday. His side, Hatay Spore, had their goalkeeper sent off in a Turkish Cup tie. They then brought on a backup goalkeeper who was also sent off just before a penalty shootout. Juve had to replace him in goal. He scored the first penalty of the shootout and his side ended up winning it overall 6-5. In Malaysia, and when you win the Man of the Match award over there, you're given a new phone, whether you like it or not. Air United goalkeeper Aidan McAdams has been banned for two games after he threw a toilet roll back at Kilmarnock fans after his side's late derby winner. And finally, not necessarily a weird story, but an out there and bold one that I'm actually a very big fan of, because Norwegian side Tromsø unveiled their shirt for next season, and it's designed to raise awareness for the sports washing that Qatar are doing ahead of the World Cup in 2022, doubling as a QR code that fans can use to get more information on the topic. I love the concept. Whether it would work here or not, I'm not sure. Hey mate, have you seen this? What's sport washing? Honestly, lads, I've got no idea. That, though, is gonna wrap up football this week, and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video, and of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel. 
channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. <laughs>